I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This is Console Wars! I just can't believe it. What's so hard to believe? That we're gonna be in Hollywood Fix? The reality show where they remodel our homes in the style of a popular movie. I mean, I'm fine with that part. Then are you having trouble believing that they got a celebrity for our episode? Or is it the fact that that celebrity is standing right there? Or is it the fact that that celebrity is Sylvester Stallone? So I'm like here to remodel your home after one of my movies. Yeah. This is so cool! Which movie is it? You're dressed like you do in Rocky. Is it Rocky? I bet it's Rocky. No, I just wore this for fun. You know, this is an authentic Rocky three row. That's so cool! Are those authentic boxing shorts as well? Well, uh, no. You see, this is actually a bathing suit. I didn't know where my pants were, and my maid's out of town, so I improvised. It's pretty good. A lot of breathing room down there, you know? So if it's not Rocky, which movie is it gonna be? I'm glad you asked. Your home is gonna be transformed into a demolition man. No way! I love that movie! Me too! Dude, I totally know how to use those seashells. Tell him! He, I've seen him, he's really good at it. Really good. And this movie's gonna be celebrating a very special 26 year anniversary. Huh. That's weird, why didn't you just celebrate the 25th or the 30th? I mean, what are you, the jerk? Only they do a 26th anniversary edition. What? What? Are you giving me lip? Don't give me no lip! Hmm. So, when does the renovation start? I don't know, like, uh, 20 minutes? What can we do while we wait? Why don't we play Demolition Man the video game? Good idea. It's a pretty good game for the Sega Genesis. Eh, I gotta say. Better for the Super Nintendo. That's it! Are we doing this? Do fat kids, skinny kids, and kids who climb on rocks like armored hot dogs? Best Demolition Man. Demolition Man is a 1993 sci-fi action film starring Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. The film got better than average reviews and had a decent box office. There were Demolition Man toys, comic books, pinball machines, and of course, video games. Games are made for the 3DO and Sega CD. The versions we're looking at today were the ones made for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. These versions were developed by Acclaim and Alexandria in 1995. Both games are incredibly similar, but there are some differences. Which one's better? Let's find out. These games look identical. They have all the same looking levels, whether it's the platforming levels or the top-down shooter levels. These games also have the same looking characters, and the same looking character animations. They're not exactly the same. Yep, because once again, when two games are identical, Super Nintendo is cropped. Just look at any stage side by side and you'll see that the Super Nintendo is cropped. Not just the platforming levels, but the top down levels as well. You see more of this 2032 future on Sega Genesis. So it's cropped, my game still looks better. Yours is missing stuff. No, your game's missing stuff. The Sega game has blinking lights in the background of this level. No blinking lights at all in Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo game has parallax scrolling in this factory level. You don't have that at all on Sega. Okay, check out this level. I have doors that open and close. Now look at Super Nintendo. Too lazy for doors. You just have static or something. The foreground of this level has pipes and chains. They're completely missing in Sega. How's about this? After this boss fight on Sega, you see explosions and the screen shakes. None of that happens on Super Nintendo. Okay, check out this first level. Super Nintendo has a cool searchlight. Can you guess what Sega has? That's right, nothing. Well, the Sega game has fire. On many levels. Nice and simple fire. How's that look on Super Nintendo? Oh, no fire. On any of those stages. 
I don't have your fire, but look at the buildings in the background of the Super Nintendo level. What's, what's that moving by the windows? Oh, fire. And check out the Sega level. The fire doesn't move at all. And not only that, you're missing something your games are always missing. Clouds. Once again, the Super Nintendo game has clouds. On two levels. And the Sega doesn't. Well, I think my game looks cooler. And I think my game looks cooler. <laughs> On this level, when the lights go out, the train goes completely black. It looks cooler than the Super Nintendo, where it just gets a little darker. Well, on Super Nintendo, when you get the night vision goggles, everything in the background goes green. Everything. Not on Sega. There's still plenty of things not green there. It's not going to put your game over the top. Over the top? Like that time I was a truck driver and I arm wrestled for the love of my son? No. Even though that movie is awesome, I was saying his game looks bad. No, it doesn't. Super Nintendo has much better use of color. And that movie is awesome. Once again, the Super Nintendo has much better use of colors. Look at any two levels side by side and you'll see that the Super Nintendo has more vibrant colors. The Sega game looks more monochrome and is definitely darker. Makes it hard to see sometimes. The side by side comparison shows that the Super Nintendo game clearly looks better. They're similar looking, but mine's definitely better. For having parallax scrolling, clear clouds, and much better use of color, best graphics go to... Super Nintendo! presentation is almost identical, too. Both games have the same Demolition Man logo, the same title screens, similar cutscene, and score tally, complete with quotes from the movie. Enhance your calm. We also have the same looking continue screen, game over screens, and the same You Are Truly a Demolition Man endings. This is tough since the games only have one cutscene, but... But mine is better. Let's look at those logos again. There are scrolling blueprints in the background of the Sega logo. And what does the Super Nintendo have? Nothing. Just blank. Lazy. That's nothing. My game My has game has a better cutscene too. On Sega, you see John Spartan in ice. You see it get heated up, and then he's broken out. On Super Nintendo, you don't see it heat up. He's just there, and he's gone. And mine is better. But I was gonna say What, that, that my score looks better too? That's ridiculous. Is it? The Sega has three people in their score tally, it's only one on Super Nintendo. Plus, the text is cooler. Instead of writing out great today, it just says GR8 and two day. Pretty clever, huh? Way to write out the entire word, Super Nintendo. Not futuristic at all. Are you kidding me? Mine looks so much better. Not only is the color better, but I have more 3D things spinning on screens. Everyone knows more spinning 3D things is an automatic win. That's all you got? You definitely lost. Well, what I've been trying to say this whole time before being so rudely interrupted is that my game has an exclusive ending cutscene. When you finally beat Simon on the Super Nintendo, you get an exciting exclusive cutscene. No cool cutscene on Sega. What, that? You think you should win because of that? It doesn't even have any music. That's an awesome cutscene. Cutscene? It's like three pictures. Oh uh, yeah, three very sexy pictures. So sexy, in fact, that it's the inspiration for the artwork in our bathroom. Those are pictures of you? I thought that was James Hetfield. No wonder he wouldn't sign them. Well, that tiny cutscene kind of gives my game the edge. With more spinning 3D logos and an exclusive cutscene, best presentation goes to... Super Nintendo. sound is identical too. And that's true. So many of the same songs. Right, but the electronic grittiness sounds better on Sega.
My songs are clearly better. Uh, my songs are still plenty gritty. And I have two songs that you don't. I have this Wasteland song. And this Monorail song. Monorail. No, not that one. Both Super Nintendo exclusive. Well, I have an exclusive song too. Instead of those boring songs, I have one awesome song for both levels. I still have more songs. So, mine are definitely better. And my voiceovers are better too. Yeah, we both have voiceovers from the movie. I'm a bad, I'm a bad. I'm a bad, I'm a bad. Be well. Be well. MDK. MDK. Yeah, we have the same voiceovers, but mine are definitely more clear. Here's the Super Nintendo voiceover. Then the Maniac Academy. What did he say? Let's listen on Sega. Send the maniac to catch one. That's much better. The Super Nintendo voiceover sound muffled when compared to Sega. There's also more voiceovers on Sega. During the game over screen, there's nothing on Super Nintendo. And just more throughout the game. <laughs> There's no Stallone on Super Nintendo. <laughs> I did pretty good with those voiceovers, but I wish they used more lines from my movie, you know? Lines like, uh, somebody put me back in the fridge. Hold it, the Schwarzenegger library? You're gonna regret this the rest of your life. Both seconds of it. And my personal favorite, stop. Well, my mom will shoot. Pretty sure that last one wasn't from Demolition Man. You give me lip? Don't give me no lip! Well, it's not just your voiceovers, but like all your sound is muted. Music on Super Nintendo is quiet, especially when compared to Sega. Listen to the actual gameplay. Voiceovers and other sound effects all sound muffled on Super Nintendo. Music and sound effects are much better on Sega. That might have something to do with Tommy Tallarico getting a shout out in the Sega game. He doesn't get one on Super Nintendo. I'm guessing it didn't work on that one. Better music, voiceovers, and sound effects? I think I just got a murder death kill. That game definitely has better sound. For having a sweet exclusive track, just clear music, sound effects, and voiceovers, best sound goes to Sega Genesis. Both games do play the same. There? I agree. Both games are mainly platform shooters. There are also two top-down shooter levels for variety. Some of the platform elements include jumping, climbing, rolling, hanging, bungee jumping, and probably the most fun element, zip lining. The platform shooter levels focus on just killing enemies and maybe a boss. The top down levels focus on shooting enemies and rescuing hostages to progress. Hostages can't die, but you need to find them in order to get through certain doors. Or static. You can shoot in eight directions in both platforming and top down. You can also run and gun if you're more comfortable taking out enemies on the move. You have unlimited ammo, but you can get temporary upgrades. You also have a limited number of grenades at your disposal. There's even temporary invincibility. No saving or password in either game. In this game it is difficult, so expect to die. Like, a lot. There is a lot of health and lives spread throughout the levels though. You can also earn more continues if you get enough points. It's a pretty fun game. But it's not perfect definitely has some issues. One problem with the game is jumping. It can be pretty hard to control. In the game where there's a lot of platforming, you'll definitely find yourself accidentally falling to your death a few times. Another issue is the difficulty. These games are tough. 
Enemies are constantly thrown at you, especially in the top-down levels. It can be insane. Good thing you can just hold down the shoot button. Again, expect to die. A lot. Very similar, but my game is better. Gotta love that wider screen resolution. The wider screen resolution makes it much easier to prepare for enemies on Sega. It's especially useful in the top-down levels. Instead of being overwhelmed by many enemies in a small space, you can manage the enemies easier in a wider space. It's also useful in the train level where you need to avoid low-hanging lights. You have more time to prepare on the Sega. Alright, alright, screen resolution. Let's talk about why my game's better. The controls. Like I said before, both games allow you to shoot in eight directions or run and gun. On Super Nintendo, this is easy to do, since you have one button to stay in place and aim, and you have another button which lets you move and shoot. Nice and simple. You can still do both on Sega, but it's a little more difficult since you only have one button for shooting. Super Nintendo does it better with two buttons. It's really not that bad on Sega. If you're running and start shooting, then you're in running gun mode. Easy. If you want to aim, you have two options. You can either fire your gun while you're standing still, as long as you weren't moving, you're locked in place and can aim easily. Or, if you're moving and need to stop and aim, simply slide your thumb to the grenade button. This stops you dead in your tracks and allows you to aim. It's pretty simple and makes it easy to switch between the types of shooting. So, one shoot button isn't bad. I still prefer two buttons. Well, I have things in my game that you don't. In this top-down level, I have lots of explosives in different locations. On Super Nintendo, many of those same spots are missing explosives. Some places do have explosives, but there's not as many as Sega. I don't know why they did that. Now this next thing is a bit bigger. The Super Nintendo game is missing an enemy. These unmanned machine guns. On Sega, they're in the factory, wasteland, and cryo chamber levels. For some reason, they don't exist at all on Super Nintendo. Maybe your game just couldn't handle it. Some explosives, a lame enemy, who cares? My game's still easier to control. Oh, you wanna talk about controls? Fine, let's talk about that slowdown. Both games actually do experience slowdown, but the Super Nintendo has a lot more of it. So be prepared to experience a lot of slowdown on Super Nintendo. And it's not just slowdown, but overall, your game's just slow. Everyone just moves and fires their weapons so much slower on Super Nintendo. Much faster on Sega. It takes longer to kill enemies on Super Nintendo, which means you'll be getting shot more. That's fun. Even the way the screen moves can be slow and choppy. Smoother on Sega. You really notice this if you go back and forth between the two games. This game is more fun with the fast-paced action you get on the Sega Genesis game. This is even more noticeable with the Genesis sound quality. The louder music and sound effects combined with the fast action give you a more enjoyable experience. Certainly more enjoyable than the Super Nintendo game. Fast-paced action? Slow and choppy. I think this calls for a song parody. Your game isn't quite the same. It's choppy in every frame. And it's driving you insane. Because of all the slow down. Gameplay's close. Sega definitely has the edge. With the wider screen resolution, elements missing from the Super Nintendo game, and being the much faster of the two, best gameplay goes to Sega Genesis. Even though both games are almost identical, one game is definitely better. And that game is Demolition Man for the Sega Genesis. It may not have the clouds or bright colors of the Super Nintendo game, but it still looks pretty good. Presentation is fine, even if it's missing the three-picture ending. It does have better sound with louder and clearer music, voiceovers, and sound effects. It's 
much better than the muted Super Nintendo game. And it has slightly better gameplay with more elements, and being overall faster. Playing both games back to back, you really notice how slow the Super Nintendo game is. The Super Nintendo game isn't bad, it is slightly better looking, but the Sega game has slightly better gameplay and much better sound. The faster pace combined with that better sound makes it overall more enjoyable. Best Demolition Man goes to Sega Genesis. Okay, okay, I'll tell them. Alright, so they're gonna come and renovate now, so let's all leave, and when you come back, this place is gonna look just like the movie. Yeah. Alright, let's do this. Better not touch my artwork in the bathroom. Alright, so, uh, what do you guys think? It's pretty good, yeah? It looks okay, I guess. They didn't really renovate anything, they just kinda decorated. Right, but look at all this cool stuff from the movie. I mean, hey, check it out. It's Taco Bell, am I right? Am I right? Wait a minute. These aren't the seashells. You mean I gotta use real toilet paper? He is so much better with the seashells. He's like a surgeon. Wait, are you giving me lip? Are you giving me lip? Don't give me no lip! I mean, I guess it's not all bad. At least it gave us this cool VR. Actually, uh, that's, that's not VR. That's, uh... For, you know, boning, the wild mambo, the hunka chunka. I don't know those dances. It's not, it's not working. Hey, let me try mine. Wait, don't put yours on too, because then you two will, uh, you know. Oh, it's working now. Dude, you're in here. And <laughs> you're totally naked. <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. Cause you're totally naked in mine! It's some weird strobe blade effect. Yeah, so you both should probably, like, uh, take that off now, uh... No, no. I wanna finish... Uh, this. Cause, it's so funny. I, I also wanna stick around for the happy ending. The funny, the funny ending. Well, screw that! I wanna have fun too, you know? Oh, yeah... Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to Xavier the Lycan for his donation of the two games. And thanks to everyone who suggested Demolition Man. And keep those suggestions coming. We will get to them. Also check us out on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later. I'm gonna wipe my fingers off now. <laughs> <laughs> and see what he did? Yeah, nope. I'm sure I'll see it when we'll I edit. Find it later. <laughs>